Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, that's a little dark, isn't it? <laughs> Just the way I'm standing, I guess, with the light behind me. Uh, so we're reading. Uh, is it uh, first, first? Yeah, it would be First Kings, First Kings five and six, and then it's Second Chronicles. I forget the chapters. Sorry, it's in the title. You see. Uh, so it sounds like the temple was extravagantly beautiful, wasn't it? Just, wow, it's just amazing to read that. They say it, it probably was the most expensive building in all of history to ever be built. Uh, and, and the size of it, the scope of it, uh, the beauty, the craftsmanship of it, uh, just absolutely magnificent. Be something definitely to be proud of. When, when you read um, Solomon and the reason why they, they did it the way they did it is, is he said that there is no God um, like Yahweh. And, and he, wanted, he wanted the temple that, that just outdid everybody else, that, that outdid any other um, temple dedicated to a God. Uh, just amazing stuff. But in the dedication, um, it's amazing that Yahweh doesn't even really mention the grandeur of the temple, the, the beauty, the wonder of this temple. Uh, what he does say is if, if the people walk integrity before him, if they walk, if they, if they loved him and, and in that integrity of that love, that he in turn would live among them, would bless them and, and increase them. That, that's uh, something, you know, all this that, that uh, Solomon did to the dedication uh, of Yahweh and uh, Yahweh turns around and says well the only thing you really need is to have my presence I, I'm not attracted by the grandeur of this building I'm not attracted by this uh, but I am tra attracted to love I am attracted to obedience that is provoked by love when we read John 14 Jesus tells us something incredible it's, it's incredible and it's encouraging. And, and he says that if we passionately love him, passionately love him. This is from the, the Passion Version, the, the Passion Translation. If we passionately love him, then Father in turn would passionately love us. And that he and his Father would come and make their dwelling in us. So... As beautiful and as grand and as magnificent as this temple is, the temple that Father really chooses is us. To dwell with us, to live with us. With, with the Israelites, he promised to live among them. But through Jesus, the promise is that he will live in us. That he would occupy the same space with us. Come on now, that's amazing. That's amazing. You, you get, come on now. That look at my eyes. That is amazing. <laughs> wow. So this temple built with gold and fine gems, and all this expensive took seven years to build. Seven years to construct this thing. Seven years. Seven years to build this thing. And all the father is looking for. <clears throat> Is a love that provokes obedience. It's all he wants. And Jesus says, if that's what we give him, if we passionately love him, then he will permanently take up his residence in us. I, I just, I'm repeating it because I, I want this to sink in. I want that just to go in deep at this moment for you. You chose him. You chose Jesus Christ. You chose him as Lord and Savior. You chose him as King. To love him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. To passionately love him. And he in turn will dwell in us. And that's us, people. That's us. That's amazing, isn't it? Wow, that's incredible. Be encouraged temple of God. <laughs> Be encouraged, 
you who house the creator of all things be encouraged you who carry around you not just the authority of the king of kings but you carry around with you the king of kings <laughs> the king of kings be blessed today be encouraged know who you are know who he is and who you are in him and uh, have a glorious day be blessed